Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Creature Feature Volume 13. Wings, it's been quite a while, um, almost six months since the last pack, for various reasons I won't bore you to death with right now. Uh, so let's just jump straight into it. I've got this example body. This is the sub-tools you're going to get, minus these example bodies, they're not included because they're just rough models. Um, I'm going to turn on occlusion because it looks nicer. So I've got that body. By the way, occlusion, if you don't know, is fairly new to ZBrush. It's in um, render preview AO. Really nice, real time AO. So, this is the way the wings are laid out. So, if I just press the down arrow, they're just almost all. They're overlaid on top of each other, so it should be easy to scroll through them and have them nearly match what you have in the scene. I'm not going to blather on about these like I often or sometimes do. Just want to quickly show you what's in this pack. Also, this pack is more than double the size of the usual ones due to um, the complexity of the wings, especially ones like these. I mean, this is decimated at two and a half million. Any lower, and it would just destroy some of the detail. And I'm not having that. So let me zoom out a bit. Wings out of stone because why the hell not? It's fantasy, right? You can do what you want. To a degree. Wings of flesh. And good old chicken terror. Let's go to a different maiden. Uh, where was I? Now we're entering the back. So that's all the birds. It's about nine or ten feather based ones out of the 33 meshes. Um, here's the bat based ones from standard to fantasy and so on. So I would actually, normally I prefer the insert mesh, but with these, I would recommend loading the subtool file because it's all laid out like this. You can draw the wings out as usual, but you know, move them about, do whatever you want with them. But it just makes it very convenient to just press the down arrow instead of. Well, I'll show you in a bit what I mean. Of course, you'll always have to adjust them a little bit, depending on which model you have in the scene at the moment. Especially bits like these uh, underarm membranes, whatever it's where it connects, will generally need to be adjusted. But that's like it's like that for any kit bash pack, right? You're gonna have to adjust some things. Like that, just get rid of it. Um, huh. This demo model was actually made with these wings in mind. That's why it fits quite nicely. Hmm, this mag pack is a bit too sizable for her, but that's fine. I'm sure you'll find somewhere to place it. So I'm just pressing the down arrow to go between sub tools, right? Now we're getting into the weirder ones. And then the final ones are just insects. These were quite hard to try and make look interesting or good for that matter because 
generally with insect wings, it's the texturing phase that'll make them stand out the most, right? All the beautiful colors, the uh, subsurface scattering, fine hairs and all that stuff. So I had to make some stuff up to make them a bit more appealing in pure sculpted mode. I mean, I could easily have just made really simple shapes like, like, so, and sold it to people, but it felt like a bit of a rip-off, you know, so, if people want really simple ones, it's easy enough to make them. Um, in fact, after this, I'll quickly show how I, how I approach making wings in a very quick demo, and I'll stitch them together. Whoops, more butterfly fairy wings. Big fairy wings. Right, again, um, oh yeah, I forgot to say they're all polygrouped in sensible ways. Like, so you can easily uh, move certain elements of wings. Whoops, what am I doing? What am I doing? Pressing X, turn symmetry on, so... You know, you can adjust them to your liking fairly easily. So, the way to quickly do that is, it's polygroup based. So if I have, in gizmo mode, pressing W, E or R, um, control, left click, on a different poly group. That's that how it selects uh, and auto masks everything else, which is such an amazing, simple but useful feature in ZBrush. Uh, so the wing, the way uh, the feathered ones are grouped is very different uh, because of the way you would want to move them. So they're poly grouped by feather type because they're very complex to to work with in general. Um, I mean, you could easily, uh, if you want to adjust them, just, you know, um, I'm gonna use snake hook instead. Use the old move brushes, really. Um, ah, come on. Or if you want to do finer work, uh, the good old uh, gizmo, control, left click on the different uh, poly groups. And you can easily um, adjust these. Now you don't have to use the sub tool, you know, load tool, navigate to wherever you've downloaded it. Um, there is an insert mesh brush as usual. So I usually go F2, uh, load brush, uh, product. Wherever you've downloaded it, so you can copy and paste it anywhere you like. This brush will take a bit longer to load because it's, uh, I mean, look, it's 57 million for the Z tool. So then they all are. All housed in one insert mesh. So let's hide the, uh, let's go to this guy. Turning symmetry on. Shift drag down and the reason it's tiny is because the scene is, is quite massive at the moment just scale it up to whatever you like but this is why with wings specifically I mean it works fine it's just it's more convenient to use the sub tools in the like so now this is totally the wrong character for this but doesn't really matter kind of cute <laughs> Now again with sub tools, if you are in gizmo mode and you click on another one, it'll load different ones. Sometimes it'll be offset. That is ZBrush, not the way I saved it. Just to cover my own ass, but it's true. I promise. Come on, be correct. There we go. That's how it should be. Yeah, but this is So you're not on a preferable way to work with this particular pack. I'm just trying to demonstrate that. Hence me preferring um, me undo all of this. Just simply 
doing this. Down arrow. Bam, bam, bam. But it's up to you. Okay, as a bonus, uh, some people have asked me how do you approach making wings, and for those who are interested, stay on. Um, let's say we want to go simple. We want to make bat wings, bat style wings. Because believe me, making feather type wings is a pain in the ass. So with bat type wings, I prefer to get the frame first. In other words, the bones, the what holds up the membranes. I'll start with that. Get the shape you want and then fill in the membranes. I found that to be easiest and I've tried a lot of meth uh, methods, believe me. So I'm going to append a Z sphere. I'm going to try and find it. Get, to get rid of that guy. Yeah, it's always okay. Uh, X for symmetry. It's going to make this a bit smaller. Um, let's pretend this is the center of the breastplate or whatever. Oh, sh crap I forgot what I don't have any reference at the moment I suppose it's fine it doesn't matter so I'm pressing uh, E now to scale is it's Q W E and R so Q draws out W will move E will scale and R will rotate but it depends if you click there or there or on the gray bit how it will behave. It's best to try it out yourself and for me to try and explain it because it's it will do my head in to try and explain it. You get a feel for it very quickly and modifiers like control and alt make a difference as well. Really cool uh, using it as that sphere. So let's say that's the shoulders of someone. Q, drag it out. Whoops, and then W to move it, move these back. How the hell do bat wings look like? <laughs> uh, I'm going to look at reference. I, I just hit a blank, so pardon me. While I quickly do this, this one is quite clear. So what does it do? It goes, hmm, hmm, hmm. So it goes down, up, and down, basically. Well, some of them, they're all quite different. Okay, that's crazy. Um, yeah, there's so many configurations. I just want to get a really simple one. Oh, this is a nice classic simple configuration. Okay, let's go with that. Um, I can't believe I forgot that. <laughs> w, move them in place. And this doesn't have to be exact. It's so easy to adjust these afterwards. In fact, I'm going to make a very broad outline first. Q, you can insert it really easily. W again. Whoops. Q to insert and W. Q is insert or drag a new one out and W and so on is uh, making new ones. So let's scale this guy up a bit. Let's try and drag one out there and then move it there. So that gray means it's it, it's not rendering correctly, so just move it till it's not see-through anymore. I want to make this my a hub, so to speak, for other guys to connect to. You don't have to, but that's what I want to do. Drag out another one. So I'm going to drag it to the very... I'm going to make my cursor smaller, because if it's like this, it moves everything. If it's like this, it only moves what's underneath it. I'm going to make this really like basic. Um, so then just Q, uh, insert two joints. Whoops. Q, drag another one out. Get back where you belong. I'm not going to spend too much time on making it a perfect config. But now is also a great time to get the top silhouette correct. You, you, you don't want just flat wings like that. I mean, they can have their use, sure, but I suppose I can just rotate them. Now I'm writing the wrong thing. 
There we go. There's all kinds of ways you can go about this. I'll go for, I'm going to keep it simple again. So if I hold on Alt, how does this work again? Excuse me a sec, I'm just getting my bearings. It's fun to play with it as well. If you hold it on control, I oh know control does nothing. I'm doing that. But you get the idea. Let's rotate this. I'm just going to rotate this forward. press R to rotate it so the membranes are going to follow yeah let's get another joint in there and look cooler and push it back no 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 there we go so it's quite important that this phase to get exact well not exactly but nail down the frame you like because it's just so much easier or harder once you've got more detail and things to move about to change it well they're not impossible at all just i find trust me i've had so much failures making wings in the last six months i wasn't working for six months but the time i did i tried a lot of different ways and this is my favorite pressing a should show you a preview and it's not doing that i wonder why well we can just go to Adaptive skin, make adaptive skin. Uh, there it is, it makes it a different, it makes it ridiculously high. Poly, I don't know why, I just, I'm going to say it remesh that. Wow, it's a slow, for a million. Hmm. Ah, it's all right, it's all right, it's totally fine first world problem okay I'm gonna go back to this guy sub tool append the skin insert rather the only difference between that is a pen will place it at the very end of your sub tool list insert underneath the current one and it will select it so I like to keep my this guy for you might need it later but just hide it the Z spheres And now there's a few ways to go about this. Sometimes I go in Maya and I would retopologize with Quadral just really quickly um, the membrane over it. Or you can just insert a plane. The, key, the other key for all this is planes. Planes, planes, planes. You could also um, um, reuse the topology brush, brush, but I absolutely hate using it. It's just awful and clunky. Maybe it's just me. I'm going to make everything smaller because my move brush, look, is doing this. It's not, it's not moving a lot. It stops like there, which is silly. So... Ah, uh, the Z spheres won't follow along. No, screw them, we don't need them anymore. Um, this is just a quick example. Alright. Sorry, I'm uh And it's important to keep this a flat plane as long as possible because it's just easier to work with, a one sided plane. I'm going to do this really roughly, but this is the general idea. Just move it into place. Um, smooth cloth is really good for this. It's fairly new as well. Because that will smooth the edges as well. The other smooths don't do that, so it's brilliant. Just whoosh, look at that. 
So if you want to double side it, just just two ways you can do this. Um, like temporarily display properties. Why doesn't do that? Just go double. You still sculpt on this one side, but you can see it, you know, like you would in Maya or other. There's no backface culling happening basically then. The other way is um, geometry, um, dynamic subdivision, dynamic, turn on thickness. This is fairly new as well. It will be slower to work with uh, depending on how many subdivs you're using. And the, the, uh, the bonus is you get thickness. What? Well, this is temporary, by the way. It's not once you, you know, it's just a visualizer. You have to apply it eventually when you're happy. But I am just going to use double for now. And frankly, using quad draw is a little bit quicker actually to get a nice mesh down, but. I'm just gonna stain that brush for the for this guy. I bet you, there's probably a better way to do this in that brush, the membrane, but I really need to get this video and this product uploaded tonight as soon I just need to get it out because I'm gonna go crazy if I don't. And I can't be bothered to think <laughs> about that, I'm sorry. But see this is the, the base the the gist of it, as I say. Um, try and get the membrane in the middle of the frame, so it can, you know, you'll be able to see it from both sides once you get thickness on your on your membrane. <laughs> that sounds so. Yeah, never mind. I have a dirty mind. I'm trying to smooth that. There we go. Um, now this is of course not the only way, but it's the way that I prefer because I've got lots of control till much later on. Even at the very end, I, it depends on the mesh. I, I don't tend to dynamesh them together. Just smoothing. I'm using a mouse at the moment, by the way. I don't have my tablet on this PC at the moment. So just quick mouse. So there's our outline. You know, there's tons more work to do, but. I think most important is to get the your fundamental shapes down, your primary shapes. It's way more important than the rest of the shit. Um, well, I'm not going to line it all up perfectly now. I mean, that's pointless. So generally at this stage, I would the Z remesh, but it looks all right. But let's see what happens. I'm going to take a second. Yeah, why not? Um, I don't have my tablet plugged in. I should really. But yeah, I would generally sculpt on one side. I would use um, Dam Standard a lot. SK Cloth. Just Google that really cool brush pack. Although it's, I'm going to subdivide. But without my tablet, it's. <laughs> It's not going to come out well, but yeah, damn standard, SK cloth, um, standard a lot. My, I've made hotkeys for my brushes. One is standard. I use this a ton for the small. Let me go to something else to, to demonstrate. Um, this is a good example. Very similar. Like B strokes are typically SK cloth, and then I would smooth it out a bit. Um, a mixture of SK cloth, the finer ones, is all just standard brush. Then I would go in and damn standard, fine little details, um, spray some alphas, you know, lightly, smooth them out. You know, fine, arty kind of stuff. I can't really explain, it's just gut feeling things. But look at reference always. I'm very guilty of not doing that a lot. This kind of stuff would be orb cracks quite often, but I would really increase the intensity quite a bit. Um, lots of move tool, lots of smoothing. And depending on the wing, if, if this was just one-sided, let me, how 
was this polygroup that okay if this was just one sided like I did here let me demonstrate um, it's the invert at the back and it can be cool but you don't always want that so generally before the detailing phase I recommend and this is not a hard rule either turning on back face masking which is in brush modifiers sorry no auto masking um, back face mask super important you know I use that all the time basically it just means that will not affect well it will because it's one-sided but let me show you if it's let me make this not one-sided so this is what it's really like this the membrane right I would generally go to um, I don't know these menus because all my stuff's up there panel loops um, elevation I would go the other way no polish just panel loop it uh, delete lower subdivision levels panel loop it now we'll just check the thickness undo if it's too thin or thick and just your desired thickness that looks pretty good to me to work with so now it's panel looped um, now with back face masking off if I sculpt like that it's still gonna because it's real geo at the back now but it's doing that back face masking avoids it beautiful isn't it and this works this is per brush if I switch to clay brush it's turned off which is good you do want that to be per brush so I would generally just go through my hotkeys when I'm in this phase and just turn them all on including smoothing so it only smooths this side and you can lose the detail on the other side uh, what else <clears throat> um, yeah but just then I would just um, detail each side independently it would be nice if I could just have to detail one side I spent a lot of time on that and then the other side would look the same but it's always the inversion and it, it doesn't look quite right it looks weird so yeah lots of little details blah, 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 go crazy I like to keep as many different sub tools as possible because it's just easier for me to work with till the very end like if there was gonna be a, a membrane here like sorry like that that would just be a sphere I would insert and manipulate till it looks um, correct what am I doing look at those gorgeous set of wings huh so oh, I'm gonna I don't want to move everything I generally add most elements with either a cube or a sphere apart from frames would definitely be polyspheres mm -hmm. and the move brush is king for these kind of things get other you know block them out get your broad after back face mask on you don't want it on for this But yeah, I'm not going to detail this either, just giving you a broad idea. For soft shapes, I generally use... a mixture of clay buildup with the alpha turned off, if it's organic. Not always, it really depends. And standard brush. I can't I don't have my tablet now so I can't sculpt and I apologize for that uh, yeah and so on I mean that's beautiful isn't it <laughs> that's a load of whack. but yeah and so you just build up elements now when it gets to birds um, that's quite different you can also use a frame if you want I recommend, and I only started doing this at the very end, 
when I've stopped using reference and just made up the overall shape of the wings, I would take like feathered ones, like let's give you an example. Um, that's a good example. Like this was made by first going, uh, painting, going to a sphere. And manipulating it to just finding shapes so I would you know do stuff like this whoops we can um, use snake hook turn on sculptress pro a little dynamic as you go but I don't want to do that now actually so no you to move brush Uh, it's Dynamesh. That's way too high. Low. Thank you. So I would explore shapes like this first. Don't worry, we're not going to sculpt feathers from this. That'll be... Oh, well, you can, but I would hate to do that. You know, so it's like, oh, it's, I kind of like that shape, or... And then... And I'm working on a feather brush, by the way, separate. It'll be like a cheap five or six dollar brush I'm not sure I want to bring that out very very soon but I've got an, uh, an IMM an insert measure feather feathers individual feathers and I would make clumps and so on and then I would place them you know I'd get my silhouette and then I'd place them over that map so to speak of a shape because it's quite hard when you don't have that map believe me it really is if you're just like placing feathers in the air it, you, you know, it's very easy to lose your way and just you zoom out and you see well there's, it's shapeless or it's boring so yeah this was only towards the end I started doing that but you'd place feathers insert mesh onto onto a map a, a nicer one than this of course but you one by one and then you get a group then you move the whole group and it's extremely time consuming it really is I'm going to be honest, it's not enjoyable making this. It's not fun. I'll be lying through my teeth if I said it was fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, once it's done, once you've got it, it's, it's quite satisfying. Um, yeah, this is all manually placed. And then you'd go in and use the um, move to apologize, bruv brush broth what is broth so move will move everything right topologize is mesh so non-contiguous meshes so it'll oh it's not working that's not good it should it should only move this guy it should it move his friends like that so that brush is just behaving funny but yeah you'd go in and you'd move that a bit move that a bit you know just Give it some character because your insert meshes would all have been the same. So I'm blabbering on enough. I'm not sure if that was useful to anyone at all. Um, please do let me know if it was or wasn't. Because then in the future with other products, I might just very briefly show how I approach it if people are interested. I don't know if you are or not. I mean, I was fairly quick to get this basic outline with a very simple method. Just the detailing is just take some time, but it's easy enough with reference um, and you can make your own VDMs of veiny bits and let's go back to a bat one and you can like make a VDM with that on it and just quickly draw it out although I didn't do that too often it looked too repetitive and I don't use other people's VDM packs not because I'm vain or because they're not good because they're amazing it's just because everything I make has to be original that's just a thing for me. It's, yeah. And I'd hate for a customer to go, oh, I can see that VDM is from Person X's pack. That won't be ideal. So, yeah, it's all original. Um, thank you very much for bearing with me. I hope you enjoy this pack. I'm glad it's being released, to be honest, because 
it was getting quite quite um it wasn't as much fun as torsos to make but it doesn't matter to you guys because it's ready to use for your high poly stuff and concepting right out of the box so i hope you enjoyed and thank you very much good night